Hello, I'm Amy Lawrence Grubich, the Thrive Director at Salem Covenant Church. Today, I'm going to share some strategies for distance learning and focus on being intentional with your environment. Suddenly, your home needs to double as a classroom. Being deliberate with the environment in your home may help increase your child's productivity and maintain a peaceful setting. Join me in digging deeper. It is helpful to first define the contents of the environment so you have taken all things into consideration. First, environment refers to a defined, consistent learning space. It should be distraction-free, with minimal visual noise, and include a personal touch. Next, resources must be readily available for the child, and all materials need to have some sense of organization. Now we're going to cover each of these in some more depth. In regards to a defined learning space, I've included some photos of potential options. A small table, a bedside, nightstand, a desk, or even a kitchen table are all good options. Every family needs to use what they have, which may require repurposing of furniture you already have access to. No matter what you use, make sure the defined learning space includes a hard surface for writing and hosting technology devices. Wireless internet signal should also be strong in this area as well. It is important to note that it may be used as a special treat or as an incentive to do an assignment in their bed or on the couch or even outside on the deck, but generally speaking, these locations should not be consistent defined learning spaces because of the distractions involved, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. When you think of adding a personal touch to the child's workspace, think of an adult decorating their cubicle at the office. It makes the defined learning space special, appealing, and even inviting. The child may choose a special piece of artwork they've created to hang in their workspace. You may allow a special stuffy to accompany them in their workspace. But if this is the option you choose, it is important that you discuss ground rules if you go this route. You should address how the stuffy can't be a distraction or you'll have to reassess the situation and perhaps choose another personal touch item. The personal touch may also be some special office supplies that the child has chosen as depicted in the middle picture on the bottom. And finally, the child may choose to include a family photo as their personal touch. Minimizing visual noise. This is a really tough one to address, but it's so necessary. I want to quickly share an aha moment I had regarding the impact of visual noise. I was teaching for about 10 years, and I went to a professional development course on nonverbal classroom management strategies. One of these strategies was to minimize visual noise. I had no idea what they were talking about. I had never realized that my visual surroundings impacted my stress levels. I wasn't sold, honestly. I had been to countless professional development courses that were far from entertaining or even educational, and I was thinking that this one was probably the same. However, one of the suggestions they made was to minimize visual noise and put curtains over the bookshelves that were being used to store materials. Well, I had some extra curtains at home that were not being used, and I thought I could give it a try. Voila! The strategy was immediately transformative for me. The classroom environment immediately felt more peaceful, and I have been a believer in the impact of visual noise ever since. Now that you've heard my story about the unexpected results I experienced, I collected some images above that are some examples of what not to do. Avoid clutter clutter and more clutter at all costs. I understand, I completely understand, in fact, how easy it is to fall behind in the care of your environment. I also understand that we all have a limited capacity in trying to parent, on top of facilitate distance learning, work, cook, clean, and maintain other relationships in your life is a lot to manage. There is no doubt about it. However, I hope that I have helped you understand the impact it has on someone's ability to reach their highest potential. That being said, I really want to encourage you to include your children in the process. 
They are more than capable to help clean up after meals, do age-appropriate chores around the house, and clean up after themselves after distance learning is over for the day. Please let me know if you would benefit from support with this. I am happy to help. Okay, this is another very tricky one. We live in a very fast-paced society, and I want to encourage you that not only does your environment need to be visually stimulating, um, minimizing that visual noise, but it also needs to be distraction-free. If your child enjoys playing Legos, for example, they should not be sitting out tempting him or her to play. This is a distraction, and it's something we need to eliminate during the academic portion of the child's day. The same would also be true about your child's favorite book. If it is not silent reading time, if it is not part of an assignment they're doing at school and they're supposed to be working on a science project instead, that book sitting on the counter staring at them may very well be temptation to be distracted. So eliminate it from the environment. Okay, I understand though, back to Legos for example, that they might be a break choice activity, or the book may be a break choice activity. But then please make arrangements to store them in another space and bring them to bring them out for that break time. Video games, phones, and televisions should also be avoided. While sometimes these items cannot be so easily brought into another room, they should be turned off and expectations should be discussed. Sometimes you may even need to take remotes away to eliminate distraction until the child has been granted permission to play or watch TV. Again, this is a tough one, but stick to your expectations and it will become easier over time. All right, next I want to encourage you to have all the necessary resources available for the child each day. If the child needs to get up and navigate through the house searching for materials, they are going to encounter several distractions and may struggle to get back to the task at hand. It presents unnecessary opportunities for potential conflict and power struggles trying to get the child back on task. Some of the resources the child may need include some of the following. A pencil or pencils, a sharpener and erasers, paper, books, technology devices, and don't forget the login and password information they will need. Art supplies you may want to include are colored paper or cardstock, scissors, glue, crayons, markers, colored pencils. You know your children best and you probably know what they will need for the day looking at a distance learning plan. So do your best to have those materials available to eliminate further distraction. All right, finally, let's address organization. One of my favorite sayings in school is a place for everything and everything in its place. This is my goal for you. Make sure the children know where to put supplies when it's done. Where should they put their work when it's finished? Where does their schedule go? Think about the logistics. If you've done so ahead of time, things will go much more smoothly and the child will be able to more independently navigate their workspace and environment. So a bit earlier, I shared a story with you about my experience with visual noise in the classroom. However, my experience has been replicated many times over. A study from the UK reported that 16 to 25 percent of learners actually increase their comprehension through specific attention to the physical learning environment. A study reported decreased distraction, improved focus, more time on task, heighten, heightened engagement with content, and increased knowledge acquisition. Attention to the environment matters a great deal. Okay, let's recap. Be intentional about establishing a learning environment. Keep these spaces consistent and make sure you address all six categories of things to consider. Finally, as you face difficulties, remember that a student's rate of learning is directly correlated with the environment, so it matters and it is worth your time and efforts. And make sure you're including your children in this process. It shouldn't be all up to you. If you have specific needs or questions that were not addressed here, please connect with me.
I can be reached at a grubage at salem covenant church. God bless you as you navigate distance learning.